Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you. Testimony time. <laughs> I so love it. Uh, the span of the testimonies. From one spectrum to the other. That's what was impressing me. From, from Jordan to the, the, the armor bearer, then from her, we jump all the way to the youth <laughs> with varying issues, but there was one central theme, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Jesus. E uh, Doc. Sri Lanka, for God's sake. <laughs> Buddhist. Just th these testimonies for me help me to see that our Christian faith is not a joke. It's not an organization. It's not a club. It's not a religion. This is a living, breathing organism with power and influence that I wish the world knew about. But we see through what Stacy said, they do know. They know. If they don't know who we are, they know who they're not. That's what the woman said. I don't even know about prayer. So she knew that she was lacking. She knew that there's something else, but she knew that she didn't have it. And that's what we need to understand that's going on around us in the world. Whether it's relatives or co-workers or whoever it is, they may not know who we are or what Christianity is about, but they know what they don't have. Amen. And so uh, I say that to enable and embolden us to, to believe that we have something of value. And that no matter what you think, well, no, nobody don't want to hear about me. No, they do. They really do. And we, we have a challenge because there is, unfortunately, a lot of misrepresentation of who we are as a Christian faith and all that stuff makes the airwaves and all like that. So you just got to go against it. But if you look and read your Bible, I, I tell people that on Facebook when they start talking nonsense. But well, what about this? What about this in the church? I said, look, have you read the New Testament? There would be no New Testament if people wasn't clowning. <laughs> Paul wrote letters because folks was clowning in the church. They were doing things wrong. They were messing up. That's why we have the epistles or the letters in order to correct this and correct that. So it's nothing new. So don't let people try to diss you with that about what's not happening. They want what we got. Amen. And as we see from the young lady, they do not want you here. They do not want you not only here, but just among believers. So we understand that, that that's what they're dealing with. So thank you, guys. Any other more testimonies? Keely, you're on. Amen. Praise God. We would like to uh, pray over our tithes and offerings. Everyone, may you please lift your offerings and tithes up. Lord, you say that you love a cheerful giver. You love a merry heart, Lord, that is willing to give. So we lift up our tithes right now, Lord, and in Jesus' name, thank you for There's nothing hand worth more. that's that is giving right now. Bless every hand that is giving, Lord, and bless every hand that is not giving, Lord. We ask that you protect and cover those that are not here with us. And if it's in your will, Lord, let them be with us again very soon. Let this tide go towards your perfect will and represent the serving 
of the house of God. And let us all serve Christ by serving one another for all our days and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Experience. Yes, experience. 
God is amazing. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Okay. This is opportunity for everyone to silence their cell phone. I usually just turn mine totally off. Yeah, but it, you know, it has so many little bells and whistles on it, I just turn the thing off totally because I think I turned it down and then I get a text and it goes, ding! I was like, that's too much stuff. Thank God for the technology. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Father, we thank you for your unconditional love and your unlimited power. It is you who made us and not we ourselves. We trust in you with all of our heart, soul, and mind and lean not to our own understanding. All power, all power, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, your mercy endures forever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, your mercy endures forever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We desire a rhema word today. A rhema word, Father, for today. You knew who was going to be here. You know who was going to watch on Facebook Live or on YouTube, in the future, you know, it'll be anyone. And so we are aware of it. And we ask you right now, Lord, to give this house a word for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Who wants to please God? Can I see a show of hands? Hallelujah. Everybody wants to please God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The question is, mm-hmm. how can you please someone if you don't know what pleases them? Mm. Mm-hmm. Married couples, keep looking straight ahead. <laughs> that question comes up. I'm not going to name any particular genders, but some people say, you should have known. Well, I got to tell you. (laughs) If if I got to tell you, then you don't look. (laughs) I ain't naming no names. names. Amen, lights. (laughs) How can you please someone if you don't know what pleases them? And as I've mentioned before that, as we're well aware of now, I mean, everything from the fast food places to the cell phone people, and every time you buy something, they're sending you surveys to find out how did we do. I left the hotel today, said, how how was your stay? They want to know how they can better please you so that you will become a regular customer so that they can improve their services, etc. So what pleases God? Amen? Amen. We have an advantage because we have the Bible. Amen? Amen. It's replete with all kinds of scriptures that lets us know what pleases God. Now, we may not know in our day-to-day what pleases God. Amen? Amen? As we're going on a job interview or dealing with our children and loved ones, at this moment, yes. right yes. now, yes, the decision I'm making right now, how does it please God? Yes. It may not be in the Bible. Well, well. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. Amen? 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 And that's why we have the church. I was very impressed that Jordan said, because of a letter he had from us, 
that his relationship with this church, that what he heard and what he was thinking about us influenced his decision. Yes. Amen. 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 And so it is when we're trying to please God. Yes. Yes, At that very moment, Jordan did not flip open the Bible. As he's in the middle of a tornado on a bus. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, $10 for a Bible in jail. Amen. So you can get all kind of other contraband in there, right? Yeah, but you couldn't get the Bible. That lets me know right there how the devil values this. Yes. Right. How he fears this. Yes. You can get all his other negative stuff really available, but this, they're going to try to make it inaccessible. And that was, amen. So this is a new revision. They revised it. So that means it was available, but somebody came up with it and said recently that we need to lock this down. Because we have them here in prison. Yeah. We have them here in a place which is like hell. Uh -huh. And so we want to be conducive to their hellish experience and influences. So we better shut this thing down. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God. Thank you for that, Jordan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is part one uh, of a series to be a part two tomorrow, uh, next Sunday. About tabernacle and we're going to see what pleases God I thank God I just uh, Apostle uh, Arthurine gave me a Dick's commentary Bible yesterday oh, oh I'm going to get lost Praise the Lord. And before, I mean, we, we, we were going out to, to have some dinner. And so she just gave it to me and I opened a box and looked at it. And I just thumbed through it while I was, before we walked out. So I hadn't really had a chance to go through it. And the first thing I looked at was Genesis because she said the commentaries are at the end of each book of the Bible. And so I just flipped it in Genesis. And right away I saw in Genesis that things that I had already been saying were true. That Everything in the Bible comes out of Genesis. All of the revelations, all the prophecies. I was like, ah, thus the term the Genesis principle. Or law of first mention. And so let's look at Genesis, the third chapter. Genesis 3, verses 8 through 9. So this is God and mankind in the beginning. Yes, come on, Amen. 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 The relationship they had in the beginning. Yes. Mind you, as I just said, what I just discovered or had confirmed for me, that that which is in Genesis is replete throughout the Bible. Yes. So this is, uh, again, the term, the law of first mention. Or well, the Genesis principle. Verses 8 through 9. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Now in that verse, in those verses, what stuck out to me was the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's what they did. The Lord and his humans. It was walk through the garden. How you doing? How are you? Nice, ain't it? Yeah. Did you name all the? Yeah, I got the giraffes. I got the, yeah. Okay. Anything you need? Oh, we're fine. We're fine. Praise God. Well, God bless you. Oh, Lord. Anything we can do? Oh, you're fine. Because everything is good. Yes. I said yes. it in the verse. Very good. Uh -huh. Well, anything else you know? Well, let's just sit here. 
just sat here with each other. That was their day-to-day -day activity. But then all of a sudden something happened and God said, where, where are you? So we see right here what pleases God. Being with us. Amen. Adam and Eve did not give tithe and offering. No sacrifices had been made at that time. There's nothing to do other than subdue the land, name animals, and, you know, deal with the garden. But the only th the thing that pleased God was walking along in the cool of the day with him. Amen? Amen. I'm going to attempt today to simplify things in terms of our relationship with the Lord. I uh, was born again. I was saved in my mid-30s. Mm -hmm. okay. I came up in Catholic school and then I didn't see a Bible till I was in my 30s. Yeah. Even though in <laughs> mm -hmm. Catholic high school, the religion class was a four-credit class like math and English. Mm -hmm. But I never saw a Bible. Because you had catechism and all of that. And so I was fortunate enough to get a job at TV 38 Now's Total Living Network, Christian television station, as the director, uh, as a supervisor in the ministries department. Oh, it was heaven. I was getting paid to, to pray eight hours a day with benefits. And all kind of people came through there. Schombach and Mike Murdoch. And, you know, we'd have among friends, Jerry Rhodes, all these people. So I just had this stuff coming in, all kind of stuff. Eschatology and, you know, the, the Gagog and Gigog are going to come across the Euphrates and, and the end times. The thing is going to, and we're going to, you know, all kind of deep stuff. And that's interesting. But I'm looking here in Genesis, <laughs> and it was walking in the cool of the day. Yes, yes, yes. Just that simple. You humans work real hard to complicate the simplest of things. Let's look at Revelations 21. So we go from Genesis, the beginning, all the way to the end of the Bible. Because it's important to understand. You'll hear uh, people, as I just mentioned before, we want to be able to, we want to equip ourselves to be able to uh, witness and not to deal with debates and argue with people. I'm done with that. You know, I look at Jesus, he didn't argue with anybody. There's not one scripture so he argued. He put it out there, you want it, you got it. You don't, fine. But so that you know, because you're, well, you know, how the Old Testament, you know, it contradicts the New Testament. No, it doesn't. The New Testament fulfills what was in the Old Testament. Amen. The Old Testament is like when we train children to cross the street when they're like five and six years old, look both ways. Only cross at the crosswalk. I know we used to have to go down where the, where the cross guard was, you know. But once I got to be grown, mm -hmm. I could be in the middle of the block. And I know how to look both yeah. ways. You know, I don't have to go down to the crosswalk because I've matured. Right. And I know the reason behind it. Exactly. That's the way it is. The Old Testament, you had to go down to the crosswalk. Yeah. Yeah. New Testament, you should know yeah. to be able, you know, without a guard. And, right. Amen. Revelations 21. Verses 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Praise God. I underlined verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. Amen. All the way back to walking in the cool of the day. Amen. God is perfect. Can I get an agreement on that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And if God is perfect, then it would logically follow that he does not have plan B. Yeah, we have plan B because plan A might not work. And if you are, have a plan B, then there was the possibility that your first plan had flaws. And God is flawless. When we say holy, 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 that holy means flawless, perfect. So God's plan in Genesis 3 is the same all the way to Revelation. Yes, yes. To walk in the cool of the day with his people. Amen. I like that. And it takes thousands of years to do that because you humans, whew. <laughs> God's desire has always been to dwell with mankind without separation. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Exodus 29. And there are lots of scriptures. I just picked a few. Exodus 29. Chapter 29. Verses 45 through 46. And those of you who are looking at us through FaceTime, how you doing? YouTube, thank God for the technology. If you can't quickly turn to Exodus, you can just rewind. <laughs> Amen. Play it again. I love it. Verses 45 through 46. I will dwell among the people of Israel and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dwell among them. Just, just me, like Paul say, not the Lord, but I say, that God knows you people are a little slow. You're a little slow. <laughs> a little bit. If you ever happen to read the book of Judges, it's a roller coaster ride. Up. We love the Lord, we love the Lord, now we love Baal. Now we love the Lord, now we love Baal. Now we love the Lord. You're a little slow. Over and over. Dwell among the people. Be their God. Amen. This is important for us to understand today. Because there's something else that's still a Genesis principle that doesn't get a lot of conversation. And that is Satan. Yeah. He's still whispering in our, in our ears, has God said? That's why I'm going through this like this. Because even as you're sitting there right now mm -hmm. with maybe some things in your mind that you think you've done so bad that, you know, God doesn't want to be bothered with you anymore. And he said, has God said he wants to? And it says, yes, you will dwell among me. Yes. I want to dwell among you. I want to be with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's a liar. Yes, he is. 
Let's look at Leviticus. The 26th chapter. Leviticus 26. Verses 11 through 12. I will make my dwelling among you. And my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, let me give a little context to this in terms of timing. This is the book of Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. So, we're talking... He's speaking to people who have been in the desert walking around for 40 years. Yeah. Look at that. Amen. Amen. He's talking to people who, as soon as they came out of Egypt, uh -huh. multi-billionaires, mm -hmm. by today's currency uh -huh. measurement, yeah. multi from slave to multi, forget 40 acres and a mule, multi-billionaires yes. 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 overnight. Uh -huh. Not only multi-billionaires, but nationhood. Yeah, yeah. They were a nation. Yeah, yeah. Israel. Mm -hmm. That's right. They just wasn't a ragtag bunch of folk walking around. Yeah. They were a nation just like yeah. other nations. That's right. That's right. Like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet and still, before Moses could come down, <laughs> they had took the gold that the Lord gave them and made an idol. Of another God. I want you to understand that. And even when that happened. He comes back around the Lord. And says I will make a dwelling among you. Glory. His grace and his mercy. That's why the angels say. Holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing anybody in this room can do to alienate God from you. Now you see in Genesis back in 3, God did not alienate himself from Adam and Eve. They hid themselves from him. Amen. Because of the guilt they had, they hid themselves. He didn't hide themselves. He didn't tell them to go hide yourself. They decided. What they did was so bad, they were not able to be with him. That's what we do to ourselves. I can't be coming up to church after what I went through. God bless you, Jordan. God bless you. God bless you. Whatever it is you moved into, he came here. He did not let guilt or anything like that keep him from yes. coming. He came here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Yes. And then got up and gave his testimony. Yes. Amen. Full transparency yes. to, for on, him God. to feel safe enough to say that in front of us. Come on. Yes. Wasn't a worry about being judged yes. and condemned. Yes. Yes. That's what this place should be. Hallelujah. I will make my dwelling among you and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your God. And you shall be my people. Hallelujah. God being one with mankind is also referred to as tabernacle. Amen. That's what that word means. Looked it up in Webster's Dictionary. Tabernacle. To take up temporary residence, especially to inhabit a physical body. Hallelujah. God's desire is to live with and in mankind in such a way that man and God are almost indistinguishable. Amen. Amen. When the world looks at you, like I mentioned last week, uh, the Tertullian, he said he wants it to be so that the heathen will look at us and say, look how they love each other. 
that the healer should look at us. The woman could think of nobody but Stacy yeah, mm -hmm. to contact. Yes. Uh -huh. Ain't that something? They should come running to us all the time mm -hmm. because we sh our walk is such that between man and God is indistinguishable. No, we're not trying to be God. No. Stop it. Don't even try no. to save your letters and emails. <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah. It's dumb. But we are made in his image and likeness. Amen? Regardless of the separation caused by the first Adam, God provided for himself a second Adam to restore union with mankind. So, thank you, Holy Ghost. From the very beginning, mm -hmm. Genesis, yes, sir. Hallelujah. we get to see how much God loves us. Yes. At the point of betrayal mm -hmm. in Genesis 3, God's knee-jerk reaction, mm -hmm. his reflexive reaction, yes, sir. Yes, sir. was to say, the heel of the woman shall bruise your head. Mm -hmm. His knee-jerk reaction was to put into motion for his son to come in and die. Right away. Time we betrayed him. Time we did what we did. Immediately, come on, come on. his first reaction was, well, you've made it rough for yourselves mm -hmm. going forward. Your life that you led here in paradise, that's, that's over. Mm -hmm. House and ever. I'm going to make a way so that we can walk hallelujah. through the cool of the Come day on again. Now, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Immediately. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. That is why, as you read your Bible, take your time. Take your time. I don't care if you just read one verse for the whole day. Quit trying to impress somebody. Yourself or trying to impress God or whatever it is. If you read one verse of the Bible, believe me, you'll have more than enough. The Holy Spirit will open up stuff to you that you'll have to read it again and again. And say, oh, 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 really? I mean, how did I miss that? I know. I've been doing this for almost 40 years. And every time I read it, I'm like, what? How did I miss that? It's the ultimate love story. Matthew. First chapter. Matthew 1. Verses 22 to 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. Amen. God with us. Jesus, the son of God. His very name means tabernacle. Hallelujah. Clearly mankind is not one with God and the Father despite the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. As we walk through our daily lives, we rarely experience a oneness with God. I emphasize experience. Amen? So we can be Aware and cognitive of our relationship with God because we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But to experience that state may be different. You don't feel it. You're not, you still may be feeling a little guilty. You're still feeling a little condemned because your circumstances are saying something else. Your circumstances are saying something on this side, and the evil one is on this side. Hath God said? <laughs> 
never stops. He never stops. Jesus was in the desert. And in the end of that last passage yeah. about the, you know, he just turned the stone to bread and all of that stuff. And at the end it says, yeah. and the devil left him for a season. Amen, that's right. Mm. Meaning he's coming back. Amen, that's right. On, to man. tempt Jesus. Yeah, that's right. He never stops. No, no. Never Ergo, yeah. Paul said, pray without ceasing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's right. He never stops, yeah, so we should never stop. Yeah, Amen. That's right. It's like having an umbrella in the rain. As long as you have that umbrella, you're okay. By the time you move the umbrella, shh, it's the rain. You got to keep it. Amen. Why don't we experience it? What prevents tabernacle with God? Mankind allowed himself to be deceived into believing that God's provision uh -huh. was insufficient yes, yes, yes. and that man must fend for himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's very significant today in the 21st century because I was just on Facebook. People said, why do you waste your time? I said, well, you know, I've come to understand mm -hmm. that on Facebook, whoever it is that I may be changing ideas with it really doesn't matter about them yeah. I found out that other people are reading that's right. That's right. they don't even respond yeah. I don't even know but I have no idea who's looking at our little debate going back and forth and for their benefit yes. I take the time mm -hmm. to try to expound if that person because people are not going to change no. people put something on Facebook they, you can't know no, they'd rather eat broken glass than say, all oh, right, you, you, I understand, look, I get it, I'm not, I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. Uh, I understand that, and it is not my goal to, you know, win a debate, win, you know, what is, what's the prize, nothing. But I am conscious that other people may be reading. And somebody put something on there about science. They said, uh, uh, how does religion prove, has religion proved anything wrong about science? Has it disproved anything? And I started out saying, well, by religion, uh -huh. I assume you mean Christianity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's basic code for Christianity. Yeah. You, I've yet to hear anybody criticize Muslims or Buddhists or anything on Facebook. When they talk about religion or church and state, they talk about us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's be real. That's right. That's right. And I said, Okay, and so immediately, and I have it in my book, which will be in part two next week. I'll talk about the Levite today. I already had the stuff in my book. I said, really? Science? I said, I wouldn't pat science on the back so quick. It took them thousands of years to put electricity in a light bulb. <laughs> have you had any idea how many thunderstorms there were in the last 5,000 years? You took you that long to put light, electricity in a light bulb? That's not, that's not so quick. They didn't even, in science, had not even discovered germs until the 19th century, the 1800s. People were dying needlessly because the doctors would go, the interns would go and handle dead people in the, in the thing in their studies and they would take those same hands and go into the maternity ward. And uh, women were dying, 90% of the women who had babies were dying from infection. Because they didn't know about germs? Yet yeah, still in Leviticus, there are scriptures that say that you must, if you touch a dead person, you must wash your hands and there are certain ingredients. And I see Macmillan's book, None of These Diseases, he wrote in the 1920s, he paralleled and found that there were scriptures in Leviticus that had the same ingredients that they were using in the 1920s before they went into operation. 3,000 years before. They found out now that DNA, in our DNA, it transmits more than just the way we look. They found out in science, lately, that DNA transmits your experiences as well. And the Bible talks about going to the third and fourth generation. 
your Come sins, yes. your behavior. Uh -huh. That's genetic yes. transmission. Yes. That's that something. Look at that. And so I put in there, after I said all of that for their benefit, I said, so clearly, uh -huh. God is the set uh -huh. and science is the subset. Uh -huh. like and you thought you'd never use algebra. Uh -huh. <laughs> so in this world yes. Yes. that we live in, people tend to worship science and technology. Amen. AI. Cloning. God. I told you. It never stops. In the Bible where it talks about the Tower of Babel. They were trying to reach God themselves. They were going to do it. They were going to build a physical structure. and do. It. They weren't talking about, well, let's see if we can... Uh, uh, Make it so that God can dwell among us in the cool of the day. No, we're going to build the thing ourselves, and we'll just be able to go straight to heaven up our tower that we built ourselves. And so today, man is still trying to be God. I say this so that you know who you're talking to and what's on a lot of people's minds, especially if they're a little younger than some of us. That they think science is it. I had GPS yesterday drop me off at the wrong address. I could have got killed. I could have got killed. I put in the right address. And it said, your destination is on the right. And I pulled over. And I called the person. They said, oh, yeah, just come on in. The door is open. Come on in. I went up, and the door was not open. And they called and said, where are you? I'm looking out the window. I was like, I'm at this. She said, no, I'm three blocks down. I was like, oh, my God. I ran, got back in the car. Lord, I suppose, oh, I suppose that door had to been open. Oh, me just walking in. Hey, how y'all doing? Past the edge was on the news. Pastor just wandered into these women's houses, claimed to be Christian. He was a home invasion. Yeah, mad fiend. Talking about he was looking for a pastor. I said, no. That's his, that was his story. GPS tried to get me killed. So when I look at GPS, just a hint, it's a guideline. You know, I just kind of, you know. So those that worship science, beware. Because Logically, if a flawless person made something, there's going to be flaws in it. That's right. Come on now. That's true. That's true. So, and I'm a nerd. Card caring, bona fide nerd. But there's no way I'm putting my faith in science. Because you humans made it. And I know there's no telling what y'all going to do. And with technology, we were having dinner yesterday in, at the Olive Garden, and now they have a gizmo sitting on the table. So, you know, she don't give you a, a, a thing and you fill it out and she take the receipt. No, no, no. You push the thing and you do the thing with the thing. There were so many more steps it took us to pay than if I just would have sit here and do for me, I define technology as less steps, yeah, yeah. not more. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's true. That's true. But the humans are just so tickled with themselves. Yeah. Look what we made. <laughs> Ain't we smart? <laughs> then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And mankind has been hiding from God ever since. Insulating himself in humanism and ironically in religion. Amen. Now that's a good one. That's a good trick there. That's true. That's true. That's true. Mm. A 
And the church will facilitate your need for stuff to do. You know, you don't walk down the center aisle, maybe light a candle, and this and that. And we got the first thing with it. And, you know, all kind of stuff, you know, if you, you know, say this and three steps to this and seven keys to, you know, a whole lot of stuff for you to do. And people, people kind of gravitate to that. That's how cults start. Especially if people have come out of a lifestyle that was so hectic. You know, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, their life is just so chaotic. They love structure. Tell me what to do. What did the pastor say? They can't quote the Bible. What did the they know what the pastor said or what the, whoever the leader is of the thing. Tell me what to do. Judge me like I'm a child. Just, you know, they, they crave that because walking in the spirit is frightening. What do you mean walk in the spirit? Just what? When I was um, in college and I changed my major from music because I knew I wasn't going to work to go to theater where I should have been. I said, well, let me get in a play right away to kind of get back on track to that. And I got in the first play that happened. And so when I did the audition, I went up there and the guy who was directing said, now, when I learned it in high school, because I didn't know I was on the clock. I mean, he taught me in two weeks the theater rudiments, and I was using Shakespeare. So I was Polonius. I had a big part. I had two weeks to learn it because they had a show coming up. So I had to learn, go downstage right, go downstage left, upstage, always do this, never turn your back. All that stuff, he was ramming into me in two weeks to do that. And I had been doing that for two or three years in high school. I came out. So when I came back, I knew what to do, go downstage right, say this and that. And so I get up there, and the director said, uh, just play the area up there. I said, what? He said, yeah, just, just the play the area up there. I said, play the area? Yeah, just, you know, no direction. He said, just play the area up there. And I was like, oh. So I was like, yeah, cool. We did a show in the round. That means audiences all around me. Oh, you know that freaked me out. Because I'm used to, you know, everybody's out front, downstage left, downstage right center stage, uh -huh. and now they all around me, and Father Bear said, well, just play the area. Uh -huh. I said, what? So I was like, yeah, and you know, and blah, blah, and woo-woo, and I was just, and as I felt, I was like, oh, uh -huh. this is the bomb. <laughs> That's what it's like walking in the spirit. Yes, yes, I like that. Mm -hmm. You're not locked down yes. to always yes. do this and always uh -huh. do that. That's play the area. Whether you're on a bus in the middle of a tornado or you're out on the street corner, a bus stop, wherever it is, play the area. You know the basics. Once you learn the basics, that's why Bible class is so important. That's why Bible study is so important. That's why in this ministry, we emphasize teaching and training. So that when you get out into the real world out there, that when situations come up, you ain't got to worry about, oh, I got to run back to the church. Let me call the pastor real quick. No, play the area. Yep. And let the Holy Spirit tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus did it. Yeah. One day he laid hands. Mm -hmm. One day he spit, put something in somebody's eyes. You never knew how he was going to do it. Sometimes he sent the word. That's it. Don't go wash. Yep, that's right. He was not locked down into any methods. No, he wasn't. That's right. That happens when God is dwelling in you. That's right. Hallelujah. When he is tabernacling in you. He could drop you anywhere in the world. Sri Lanka, a bus in a tornado, wherever it is. And you will just somatically look around, just like I said, with special forces. You'll quickly assess the area and say, okay, this is how we're going to play this. And know that God is leading you. Yes. Amen. Yes. This is totally out of the realm of, of what I'm normally doing. It's out of my uh, comfort zone. Yes. It's out of my culture. You know, I, I don't even speak the language. Yes. But Holy Spirit, whatever. What are we going to do? Yep. Yep. So, yeah, we insulate ourselves. Insulation, putting something in front of you, around you. 
So that now you are keeping him from tabernacling with you. Because you got this other stuff around you. Science and humanism. Humanism. Uh, the definition of humanism is an outlook or system of thought attaching prime importance to human rather than divine or supernatural matters. Religion. Religion is a set of organized beliefs, practices, and systems that most often relate to the belief and worship of a controlling force such as a personal God or another supernatural being. Ah, Mark. Let's look at Mark 7 regarding religion. Mark 7, verses 1 through 20. So this is a long passage, and I had to do it this way so you have the context of what, what's happening. Starting at the first verse, the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is unwashed. It's Mark 7, verses 1 through 20. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding on to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pictures, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, and their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother. And anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father and mother is korban, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their mother and father. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. You nullify the word of God by your tradition. Nullify, void out, cancel. In John 1 it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and... The Word was God. The Word was God. And he says here that you nullify the Word with your traditions. You cancel Jesus. You cancel him and his indwelling. You cancel the tabernacle yes, yes. with your traditions. Mm, like Amen. Amen. You cancel the word of God. So you can come to church 365 days every day, live up in here, and never miss a day, and read your Bible back and forth all year long, and you can tell people and recite, and you know that Moses was left-handed, a lot of people didn't know that, and you know, and impress people with all the scriptures and stuff you know. He said, but your traditions cancel. Out the word made flesh. Religion can cancel the experience of God dwelling in you. Amen. At the time that Jesus, you know, they, they ask him which is the most important law and rule. When they asked him at that time, 
they had gone from the Ten Commands to 663 laws they had. 663 ways to be wrong. 663 ways to feel guilty. 663 ways to be condemned. So you will never, ever experience tabernacle. Because there's always something that you ain't doing right. And they asked Jesus, which is the most important. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, and strength. And the second is as the same, love thy neighbor as thyself. In other words, play the area. Play the area. Amen. If you love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, you ain't got to quickly look up and say, okay, what should I do now? Which law is this? Which is the... Amen. Because he's in you. He's working in you. He's living in you. To the point that you can't go against him. Amen. You can't find the dot, tittle, and comma, and chapter, and verse about it, but you know I ain't doing that. Now, come on. That's it. That's it. Hey. Or I will do this. How can we welcome God into tabernacle with us? Jesus replied, Verily, verily, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Facebook, YouTube, you must be born again. We can't PC around it. I can't go around left. I can't go around the back. I ain't got no words to try to make it old, you know, an alternative. No, no, no. That's hate language, whatever. You must be born again. Hebrews 11, 6 says, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Oh, we started out, how do I please God? Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Mine says earnestly seek him. That is important. It doesn't say that those who kind of have a general idea of who he is. They have a cursory kind of reference. to No. Diligently, earnestly seeking him. And that's because we've got a lot of stuff going on in this, in this stuff. Yeah. Our flesh. It's hungry. It's sleepy. It's tired. It's mad. It's, you know, whatever. The, the, the young lady shared what happened to her as a child. Uh, coming, you know, incubus, succubus. Everything is going. So we have to work hard. We have to put some effort in seeking the Lord. Amen. First Corinthians. Third chapter, 16 verse. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that you're, you are the temple of God? Yeah. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Amen. So. Tabernacle. Tabernacle. Amen. 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 And the things that can disallow God from tabernacling with us, yeah. if there's a word like that, are desires of the flesh. Or is the first time I thought I heard it <laughs> when I was in church, the designs of the flush. God, it took me three years before I found out what they were saying. <laughs> I thought designs of the flush was something to covet. I said, man, I sure wish I could get the designs of the flush. <laughs> Child, it's the designs of the flush. <laughs> Catholic school, but I didn't know. And I was like, man, what is that? I'm the Bible school director. I can't ask nobody to think I don't know. And it was only when I got to TV 38 with other people and I heard them say, you have the desires of the flesh. I was like, oh, come on. Really? Hell. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. Again, I repeat that one. The desires of the flesh are against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. To keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, for those who, who and this is another, because you got some of the regular stuff that always comes up when people want to challenge you. Y'all judgmental. Church folk are always going around judging people. If you do all of this stuff here, we are not judging you. You doing it to yourself. Amen. Could somebody find John 3.18 for me? I don't want to waste more time looking in spite of prints too small. John 3.18, because people love John 3.16. For God so loved the world. All the heathens know that one real well. For God, they even put in the football against the backdrop of the thing. They got John 3.16 secular world and that's what y'all supposed to be Christian y'all supposed to love and love and now all you doing is judging and okay you know okay uh John 3 18 you got it could you read it out nice and loud he who believes in him is not judged he who does not believe has been judged already already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son God amen been judged already. We don't have to say one word to you. You yourself have set up your own judgment. By not being disconnected from the matrix. I.e. born again. So yeah, you can do all this stuff. Like Paul said, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Yeah, you want to do Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, have a ball. Yeah, yeah. But there are consequences. Amen. Oh, yeah. We didn't make the consequences. Nope. We didn't make a hell. Mm -hmm. We didn't make whatever it is you're going through, the STD. We didn't make that for you. Nope. You, you. Amen. Mm -hmm. People need to understand that our Christian faith is not a bunch of do's and don'ts. Right. We're not here to kill your fun. But there's no fun in jail. Yeah. There's no fun with STDs. There's no fun in divorce. There's no fun in being broke and poor. There's no fun in being in the hands of Satan. There's no fun in that. And we want you to have fun. More abundantly. Fun. To be able to walk around, ain't worry about nothing. You ain't got to try to check that last ladder, make sure your story stays straight. You know, That's right. You could just right. be anywhere and not have to worry about nobody judging you feel about nothing. Yes. That's right. When I'm driving, I put my car on cruise control. Uh -huh. On 55, the people love me. Yes, they do. They do. I know they do. Because yeah. uh -huh. when they drive by, they blow their horn and... Uh -huh. Blink the lights and they tell me I'm number one. I know that's what they're saying. They get that, they they roll the window down, stick the hand out, and let me know you're number one. So I know I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> and then they go right on past me. But anyway, when I'm on cruise control. I love it. I'm on cool control. I'm just here, you know, shining down loud, whatever, listening to music, driving along. And I roll past, and there's the police. I have no thought about them. I ain't worried about, oh, put on my brakes real quick. Cause I have no adjustments to make. Because I'm already doing the right thing. That's fun. Amen. I know, I know, I know. I know. Full transparency. I might be a little, but I got it on cruise control though, cause I got a lead foot. And these new cars now, man, I'm an old school guy. 
I was I, yesterday. I looked at oh, I was doing eighty, and it didn't even feel like it because there were no other cars around me. You know, it was just. I was like, oh, dude, slow down. Two hundred fifty dollar ticket. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not fun. If God is dwelling in us, if he is tabernacling with us, if God is in you, and the Spirit says that, no, you're not, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, then that kind of makes you a little church. Amen? Or the congregation of one. Just you and your angels. You are the church. And folks should be accessing you anywhere it is, Monday through Friday, Saturday. Just come on in, y'all. <laughs> Amen. And Jesus, Ramasi Kori Munkesa. The ultimate goal as believers should be self governance. That I don't need the pastor to tell me what to do. I don't need somebody lording, you know, That's kind of right. telling me. I should be able to move in and out of yes. anywhere else That's right. and be able to assess and judge and discern my own self. Yep. Yep. Amen? That's the ultimate goal. And it takes work and time to get there. In John, the fourth chapter, verses 19 through 24. John, Gospel John, Gospel John, 4th chapter, verses 19 through 24. This is at the well with the woman at the well. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Lord. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Yes, yes. God is spirit. And his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. I'll go back. Yeah, yeah. That one part where it says, For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Yes, yes. Let's go all the way back to the beginning when I said, What pleases God? Yes. Amen. Yes. Here it is right here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Those are the kind of worshipers he yes, seeks. Yes. He is a spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. I understand the intentions that people had at the time of COVID. A frightening, something that I thought I'd never see except in a science fiction movie. Yeah, yeah. That I'm actually living it. I mean, it was horrific. And in the Christian faith, people were concerned that if people couldn't come to church, mm -hmm. That's right. that there would be some kind of loss or mm -hmm. deficit mm -hmm. in us mm -hmm. as individual Christians. That's right. I personally thought, because based on, look at my Facebook guys, mm -hmm. Facebook, and they would say, oh yeah, you can't do it. The, 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 the government mm -hmm. is trying to shut down the churches. And I was like, dude, the government ain't scared of y'all. What difference are you making now? <laughs> hey, man. Right. Why they got to be scared of y'all? <laughs> it's six churches on one block and the liquor store at the end of the corner. They ain't scared of you. <laughs> I said, the government shut down Broadway and Hollywood. Yeah. The bastions of demonic and all the debauchery, if they shut down themselves... They ain't worried about you. And I said, furthermore, you make God seem like a punk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. If we don't come together in a building somewhere, yeah. uh -huh. God
God is not going to be able to function? Are you kidding me? Creator of the universe, possessor of heaven and earth, almighty, all powerful. And because we didn't come up in our little church in the little building somewhere, oh, no, God can't express himself. Every one of us was a church building. Yes, yes. Amen. I learned to worship at home. Me and my wife, I said, Vanessa, child. Here we is, two multiple ordained, yes. multiple times uh -huh. ministers. If we can't have church together in here, we need to hang it up. That's right. That's we need to just turn in our lives and give us a ticket back. Now, we two, if we can't have church together, that's sad. That's right. God is spirit. Yes, he is. And his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. And you hear prophetic words yes, yes. that people talk about. It's going to come a time you won't be able to have a Bible. $10 for a Bible in jail. You won't be able to have a Bible. You won't be able to have it. So, what do them people do in the catacombs in the new church? Hiding underground. Did you not know, little known fact, that in the first 300 years of the church, they never had a church building? No church building. And in the first 300 years, all of the known world had been evangelized. No internet. No phone. They met in houses here and there. They did whatever. And now we got internet and church buildings and mega churches and all like that. And you're going to be scared because we can't come to a building once look at it. Read your Bible. Those people did fantastic things. Yes, yes. Without a building, without, you know, order service, the A and B song. Uh -huh. That's right. They couldn't even sing out loud because the neighbors would turn them in. Yep. They got the underground churches in China. Mm -hmm. That's true. Neighbors would turn them in. Yep. Yep. Mm. That's the maturity that we have to have yeah, as believers. Yeah. Yeah. God's desire to tabernacle with man is summarized in the real yeah. Lord's Prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Gospel of John in 17th verse. Mm -hmm. Verses 16 through 17. Jesus speaking. And he's speaking to the, his father. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. And that all of them may be one father just as you are in me and I am in you may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me I have given them glory that you gave me and, and that they may be one as we are one I am them and you in me may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. All the way to the very end of his life. That was his prayer to his father. That we be one. And that we, that God tabernacle in us. As Jesus tabernacled in his father. So he, that's his prayer. That's his desire. That's what pleases God tabernacle. God's covenant with Israel also applies to the Gentiles. Because you'll look at that and they'll say, well, those are to the Jews. Well, let's see. God's covenant with Israel also applies to us Gentiles. The word Gentiles mean those that are not Jewish. Galatians, the third chapter, verse 27 through 30. Galatians 3 Verses 27 through 30. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. Neither is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. 
and heirs according to the promise. Everything that God promised to Abraham. You look in Genesis. I looked at my Jake's Bible. It had how many prophecies? It's 56 prophecies in Genesis. I was fascinated. He made a covenant with Abraham into his generations. We're in that. We get that too. Even though we're not born Jews, we're not Jewish. We, we, we're, we're in that if we are in Christ. According to the promise. So everything, every scripture, everything in the Bible it has, especially in the epistles, because as I told you, uh, the epistles uh, are written to the believers. They weren't written to the heathen. Whatever it is God said to Abraham, whatever it is he said to them, Leviticus, uh, Deuteronomy, all that stuff is to us. Promised to us. Yeah. Amen. Amen Father, we thank you for your indescribable and incalculable love. Our minds can't even imagine that kind of love for another human being. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you are not a man that you should lie, or the son of man that you should repent. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? Has he not promised? Will he not make it good? I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yea, I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness, thus saith the Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are not changeable. We thank you, Lord God, that your love for us is eternal. And we ask you right now, Lord God, to continue to train us and to teach us to make way for your tabernacle. And we thank you, Lord God, that you never leave us or forsake us. Let your Holy Spirit move forward now, Lord God, and, and awaken us, Lord God, so that we are able to play the area. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. To God be the glory. glory to God be the glory. glory now, yes. as I said, okay, yes. As I said, 